Hey everyone, this is a really cool video with one of the best Magic players of all time. Unfortunately, his audio quality isn't super great, but I tried my best to make this as enjoyable as possible. So I hope you enjoy it. I know you told me you played Hearthstone. So when was the last time you played Hearthstone? I played at the very beginning. I think the last set that I played was next run. Give me your experience in Magic. I've been playing Magic for, I think, basically 25 years. I was world champion in 2020. I was player of the year. I've won two Pro Tours. I'm tied for most top finishes. I've won a lot of national titles. I've been around in Magic. So Cargo Guard, three costs, two, four. At the end of your turn, gain three armor. So it's a pirate. I know there have been pirate decks before, but they were mostly aggressive. They won't be like super interested in armor. If the armor is relevant for you, they can easily attack it. They can't easily attack it, then the armor is not very relevant, right? So if you're playing versus a control deck, then they might be unable to like kill this very early, but they don't care. Uh, if you're playing versus an aggro deck, it, it basically has taunt. This is probably not a great card. Like it feels a little bit understated to me. It's a card that looks good, but doesn't play out actually good in a game where you can just attack your opponent's minions. Yeah. So your analysis is actually pretty spot on there. Most of the time in like a tempo based matchup, it is kind of relevant. The three armor can be the difference of you living, not the most important minion in the deck by far. It's just a decent pirate that they play because basically it has a pirate tag. This card is too slow for control warrior. There are just better cards and better options to gain armor. So this is Demon Hunter. I don't know if you know Demon Hunter existed in Hearthstone. They added it like two years ago at this point. No, I don't. I yeah, didn't. so brand new class. Demon Hunter's identity, I would say, is more on the aggressive side for the most part. Okay, so when it says they may attack an additional enemy minion, does that mean if I attack one, it attacks two at once? Or do I just get two attacks? You can hit face and then attack a minion. You can hit one minion and then attack another minion, but they do not attack at the same time. But it loses weapon durability. Yeah, it would, yeah. I don't know how easy it is for Demon Hunter to equip a weapon or to like have attack but this card seems pretty strong by itself it is for attack basically doubles any amount of attack that you had before i would think this card is very strong it seems like it's gonna kill a lot of people right now demon hunter has a one mana weapon that's really good with this card and you're exactly right this card is very powerful there is a very good chance this card is getting nerfed yeah it seems like a lot oh. of burst for just one cost yeah it's a very very good card you could have a lifesteal weapon play multi-strike hit two minions kill both of them and restore that much amount of life back. It um, also scales like, very well with itself, right? Like if you play two of them, you can just kill three things. Seven costs, four, five, better cry, cast the highest cost spell from your hand. So for seven costs, you're not getting that much of a discount. There was a 10 cost spell that was like, you can to the face. So I don't that know one. if that yeah. still exists or if there are other 10 cost spells. So, I mean, you're getting a three cost discount. I don't think this is a good value card. Even if you have a seven cost spell, you play the minion and you play the spell. But at that point in the game, getting an extra four or five doesn't seem that important to me. Especially because if you don't have a big spell in your hand, this is just extremely weak. So my inclination is that if there's a, a deck that is trying to like OTK with a very big spell, this card could be part of it. I don't think it's good enough. This card has not really seen any play because yeah, seven mana is not a huge discount for like, like 10 mana or nine mana. For a seven mana, four or five to cast a spell and basically have a random target. So I can cast that uh, and play the 10 damage spell like on myself? Technically, yes. Oh, that's, that seems <laughs> worse than I thought. <laughs> but uh, your analysis is right. Even without the random aspect of it, it, it just has never seen play. Oh, I've seen this card in Battle Rounds. Your Battle Prize triggered twice. So this is very vulnerable. Well, either you play it and it lives, and the next turn you, you play a good battle cry and you get something great, or you're trying to combo it out with something later in the game. I don't think this is very good for a value. It's just too much of an ask to have this in play and have it survive and then play a battle cry that's actually worth triggering twice. I don't remember any battle cry cards that would be worth playing a card this bad, but maybe there are better battle cry cards now, but my inclination is that it's not good. This card was actually introduced, I think, the year after you left. When when this card was first introduced, it did see play. I don't know if this is a term in magic, but pseudo taunt. If this card is played and you don't kill it, the game is probably over. Like that's how powerful this card can be. Okay. Uh, so they recently brought back this card and this card currently still sees play. And in Battlegrounds, it's also very good, like you said. I mean, that yeah, that makes sense. So four costs, four, four, this costs more than every minion in your deck, summon two of them. Two of them, two minions or two Drek'thars? Two minions in your deck. Card seems very good. I don't know how big of a restriction having your minions cost 
Sphere LS is. Maybe there are like some insane four cost minions that you're giving up, but assuming the restriction is not a deal breaker, this card seems incredibly strong. Three minions for, for the cost of one, right? Like a four cost four four is not good, but it's passable and you get two extra things on top of it. So like this seems like it's worth warping your deck. You're entirely right, by the way. This is, I think, arguably the strongest card in the game right now. This card is so powerful that it is the highest mulligan win rate card in the game. Next round of nerfs, uh, this card should be in there. But your analysis was incredible. It, yeah, it does look uh, very good. <laughs> so seven costs four, four, battle cry. A minion in your opponent's hand, gain its stats. So I assume this means just the minion's gone. The minion will be gone, yep. This is a card that I believe is good in control versus control, but it's going to be really bad versus any aggro deck. Well, either you have a deck that is so good versus the aggro and like mid-range decks that you can afford to play a card like this just for the control matchup because that's the only thing you're losing to, or you expect a metagame where everyone is playing control. So it really is only good in, I think, control mirrors. So my inclination is that it is probably not good enough to see play. This is what we call a tech card in Hearthstone. This card is used in Control Warrior at the moment. Because there's the lack of interaction in Hearthstone, you have to have some way to actually deal with a matchup you're just gonna 100% lose. So that's where Munis can come in. So Munis is actually sees play against very specific decks or just like eating a big minion, right? Sometimes there's some really good late game minions in the game and you just take a lot of stats and just drop a really big Murloc for seven mana. But yeah, this card actually does see play. Maybe not like a ton of play, but it's not, I wouldn't call it a niche card either. I played this and this was on the right or left side of my hand. I get the outcast bonus on the cards that I drew. Yes, yeah. It seems like it's relatively easy to trigger outcast, especially if your deck is cheap. Huh, this is a tricky one because like decks that would like to draw three cards probably have for six mana, like six mana is a lot, but three cards is also a lot. I think this card is insane if you can easily do the outcast thing. I think this card is good. I think you're getting enough out of it. Wouldn't play it in like a super fast deck because it's, well, maybe I still would. I mean, I guess I could be the most strong here because this card could be broken or completely unplayable, but I, I'm gonna go if it's good. When this card was released, it was five mana. At five mana, it it was the best card in the game, arguably. At six mana, this card did see a ton of play in aggressive decks. Like you said, you just kind of played this on turn six, drop your whole hand that you just got, and it's a lot of stats at once. And this card continuously saw play in a bunch of Demon Hunter decks. People learn very quickly that with Outcast and Skull of Gul'dan, you don't actually want to play a high cost deck. You want your maximum card to be like five mana, and then Skull of the Gul'dan's the highest cost card in your deck. And this card saw continuous play until basically they released better card draw for Demon Hunter. Good is a really good way of putting it. So Dragon Queen Alex Traz, a better Pride deck has no duplicates at two when it drives your hand, it costs zero. I mean, this seems like a very good card for a slow Highlander deck. I think if this is literally your only Highlander card, it might not be worth it. Seems incredibly strong. You know, it's a nine cost, but it's like a lot of stats. So like you could in theory play this and get like three nine cost minions and you don't even have to play them all at once, right? They don't even go to play. You get their battle prize, you can send back them. This seems very good. This card was known as Scan Queen Alex Straza because <laughs> when you played this on turn nine, there was a really good chance you just win the game. Not only could you win the game from this, but there was a really good chance if your opponent was in a winning position, you could play this card and you would just win the game from that position. They ended up nerfing this card to the dragons that she act makes cost one, but at zero cost dragons that she produced, this card was insane. Secret passage, replace your hand with four cards from your deck, swap back next turn. You give up your hand and draw four cards. And then at the end of the turn, you send those four cards back to your deck and you get your hand back. It is important to note that you don't draw the cards, it just replaces the hand. Uh, I mean, this seems very good. I think you could play like two ways. Either you're playing this uh, just with a low curve. So your hand is already empty or you have a card at that point that you don't want to play. You play this, you're going to draw four cards. You're going to play two or three of them for one mana. That seems pretty good. Or you can try to play this in the middle of sort of a combo turn. That, but that seems harder. Yeah, this card seems pretty good in either aggro or combo. I would probably not play it in a control deck. But even then, if you're digging for something specific, this card was played in every single road deck. This card also started off with five cards to replace your hand with rather than four. They quickly realized how disgusting that was, so they moved it to four. There's so many use cases for this card that it was just insane. So nine cost six six battle cry repeat all other battle cries cards you played this game. With battle cries, you get enough just like good effects. Obviously, this is deck dependent, right? You need a, a good number of battle cries, and this is a nine cost card. But I think on average, you're gonna get a very good effect for 
of this if you play later in the game. So I assume this card is good. So this card's not just good, it was fantastic. There were battle cries in the game to make this card bounce back to your hand so you can continuously repeat this effect. Oh. There are, there was, you could basically make Shutterwalk this infinite beast that would destroy any slower deck because they just could not keep up with them. I wouldn't say he was broken, but when he was first released, the animation time on this card was not capped. So there was moments where you would be sitting in a game for 10 minutes because he would <laughs> recast every single battle cry, right? After that change, he still saw play and the card was good. Risk is keeper. After you play a minion, you win damage to all minions. Oh, it is a pirate. I mean, this is a very contextual card. If I'm trying to remember the warrior decks back when I played, they were really into just do one damage to everything. It seems like the ability to do one damage to all minions is probably good, but also they can just attack this. This is like a better rule run. Play this in the same turn, you would do something else and it's already a rule win. So this seems good to me, but again, contextual. I probably don't want to play it in the aggro deck because I'm just going to kill all my pirates, right? So even though it is a pirate, but it is probably good good with the whole warrior thing of enraging and dealing damage. I would think this card is good. It wouldn't shock me if it wasn't good, but I would guess good. This card, I want to say, was the only reason that we had a chance against Demon Hunter when it was first released. It was like you play Demon Hunter or you're playing Risky Skipper Warrior. The card went to a deck that was called Tempo Warrior, and there was a bunch of effects. So you remember Armor Smith? Anytime a friendly minion takes damage, you gain one armor. Yes. You would put Risky Skipper, you'd play Armor Smith, you'd play a couple other minions that actually benefited based on how many damage minions there were on the board. And this card would not only full sweep your opponent's side, but help you develop something behind it. It would help you draw with battle raid. It was just like a very premium warrior card. Classify it as one of the best cards warriors ever received. So choose a friendly minion, discover a minion of the same minion type. So I assume this can't target itself, but what it if it targets another, another on one of it? Because this is all minion types, it would just give you three random tribes. I mean, this card seems very, very good to me. Like a two mana, two, three, like you said there was a pirate deck, for example, right? Like this is just a two minute through two pirate that draws you another pirate if you assume you have anything else in play. Like that seems like a really, really good deal for just two mana. Even if you're not playing any synergy deck, it does require you to have other cheap minions, right? You're not just gonna hold this in your hand for until like turn six to play. I would imagine this card is very good. So this card was actually just released in their newest expansion. I think if I go look right now, this is the most played card of the expansion. I wouldn't say it's meta defining. It's not like the best card they released at the set because it just fits in so many different decks. It's just a good card, but you're nuts. I didn't realize how good you were. That's crazy.